listening to the Read Aloud Revival Podcast. This is the podcast that helps you make meaningful and lasting connections with your kids through books. Well, hello there. It's Sarah McKenzie. I'm your host for the Read Aloud Revival Podcast. And today I have episode 113 for you. We're going to be talking about choosing books to read aloud as a family if you have a wide range of ages, because that can be really tricky, right? Finding something that engages the young ones and the older ones can be hard. So that's what we're going to talk about on today's show. You will get the show notes for this episode at readaloudrevival.com slash 113. You're probably going to want to grab those because I'm going to give you a bunch of book recommendations at the end of this show, of course, and we'll have a book list there for you. There are a few ways to handle this. And of course, it's going to depend on your particular family, your kids' ages, when you read aloud, what time of day you read aloud, how long you have. And because I don't know your particulars, I'm just going to throw out some ideas and you can see if any of them stick. (laughs) See if something I say today on the show resonates and you think that might work that might be helpful for you. So first of all, I want to tell you what I do. Now, if you don't know, I have six children. My oldest is, at the time uh, this podcast airs, almost 17. I have a 15-year-old, a 13-year-old, a six-year-old, and twin five-year-olds. So we have these older kids who are 17, 15, 13, and then these younger kids who are five and six. And I actually separate them for the most part for read-alouds. I read aloud to my older kids, my teenagers together, And then I read to my younger kids separately, trying to find books that appeal to my five-year-old twin boys and my 17-year-old daughter. Yeah, that's kind of a challenge, right? So I don't actually even try to do it too much. If we're listening to audiobooks in the car, I will will, uh, use the principles that I'm going to talk about in a second to choose books that will appeal to everybody's age or try to appeal to most of them anyway. But for most of our read aloud time, I actually separate them. So that might actually help if you have a really wide age range, and you're thinking this seems impossible, don't be afraid to separate the kids out. I know some of us have this idea that we want all of our family to be listening together all the time, and it's going to be amazing. But sometimes that's just not what reality looks like for us. It's also a lot more difficult to get everybody in the room at the same time, especially when you have older kids who have jobs and driver's licenses and classes and activities. It can be difficult to get everybody on the same schedule. So free yourself from the idea that everybody has to be reading all together. Mom, dad, and all the kids. That's not necessarily how it has to look. You can make this look however you need it to look at this particular season in life to make sure that you're having the opportunity to connect with your kids through stories, even if it doesn't look exactly how you expected. Now, let's talk about choosing books when you are reading aloud with a wide age range. One of the things that I do when I choose books for my, my teens, which do have an age range, of course, right? My oldest teen is almost 17, like I mentioned, and my youngest is 13. How do I choose books for them? 13-year-old boy, 15-year-old girl, 17-year-old girl. Well, I tend to shoot for the middle. You may have heard the advice to read aloud to your kids above your oldest child's reading level. I hear this a lot, especially in homeschooling circles. I think that probably works if you have one or two, maybe three kids who are pretty close in age, and if your youngest child already loves reading as much as your oldest one. (laughs) But for most of the parents that I know, that is not a good solution. I remember when my oldest three were younger, they were 10, 8, and 6, and I wanted to read aloud Anne of Green Gables, and that would have definitely appealed to my 10-year-old daughter. I think it would have kind of appealed to my 8-year-old daughter at the time, not as much, but definitely not at all, not remotely, to my 6-year-old son. And the reason I didn't read it aloud to them is because at the time, my 10 and 8-year-olds already loved books and stories, but my 6-year-old didn't. He was in that really hard decoding phase. He was struggling with his own personal ability to read and to decode words and to get fluent. And because of that, I really wanted our read aloud time to be supporting his delight and love for stories, to give him a thirst and an unquenchable thirst, this unquenchable desire for more stories. To be honest with you, Anne of Green Gables, as perfect as that book is, I'm just going to (laughs) say, it wasn't going to do it for my six-year-old son. So don't get hung up on this idea that you need to always read above the level, reading level of your child or your oldest child. 
you need to look at your own kids, your own situation, your own family dynamics and see how you can choose books that will appeal to the most number of people and specifically to the kids who have not yet fallen in love with books. I would even say focus more energy on choosing books that will appeal to any of your children who don't love reading as much as the others. Because a child who loves stories and loves books, they'll listen and enjoy a lot of things you read, even if it's outside of their normal wheelhouse, even if it's a little above their level or a little below their level, because story lovers love stories. But if your kids have not yet fallen in love with books and stories and being read to, then those are the kids that you want to appeal to. So I would actually focus most on their interests, their age, um, what would appeal to them and kind of let everybody else just enjoy whatever stories you choose for them. You don't need to tell your kids you're doing this. <laughs> just like so much of parenting. Look at your kids. Think who needs to fall in love with stories? Who do I want to make sure runs to read loud time and choose books for that child? I tend to shoot for the middle of my teen. So I shoot for about my 15-year-old daughter. She is a voracious reader. So it's not that she doesn't like reading as much as the others, but because they all enjoy reading now, I don't have to choose books so much based on that. I can just choose books for the middle and know that the kids who are the child who's younger and the one who is older are going to get something from that. And let's talk about that for a second. The principal thing we want to be thinking about when we're reading aloud with our kids is keeping them engaged because reading aloud is all about connection and relationship with our kids. So the kids who are listening need to be able to more or less follow the storyline in order to be engaged, right? In the, not 100%. It's okay to read a story that's a little above one of your kids' ability to understand what's going on. But if you are reading a classic with your kids and your five-year-old or six-year-old totally is lost and is not understanding anything, they're not going to come to love Read Aloud Time and see it as one of their warmest, happiest family memories. So you want stories that engage as many of your kids as possible. And I can give you some ideas for that. One of the things I like to think about is when we are reading aloud with our kids, think of it like spreading a feast. And I think Charlotte Mason said some things about this, but the idea is like spreading a feast. When you lay out a big feast, you don't spoon feed each individual item of food into your child's mouth, making sure they get exactly, you know, a quarter cup of mashed potatoes, four tablespoons of peas, <laughs> right? We don't do that. So you spread out this feast and everybody takes what they're fit for. And that's what we're doing when we're reading aloud with a wide age range. We're spreading a feast. Older kids can still get so much from books that are under their reading level. Let me give you an example. Most of what you read is actually under your reading level. But let's take a children's book as an example for now. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, which is my example for everything, it seems, here at Read Aloud Revival. But that's because C.S. Lewis deserves it. He's brilliant. So <laughs> we'll talk about The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. Read that book as an adult and tell me it does nothing for you. <laughs> it's written at a Lexile measure of 940 which in normal people lay terms, that means about the fifth grade reading level. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is written at about the fifth grade reading level. But when you read The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, don't you come away richer, even though you're able to read books of much higher reading level, right? So I think we don't need to be afraid of reading things that are under our children's, our oldest children's reading level. And if we let go of that fear, realizing that they can still get so much benefit from the books we're reading aloud to them, even if they're not above their reading level or even at their reading level, that opens up the doors to enjoying so many other books as a family, so many more books and everybody getting what they're fit for. The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe is a great example because your oldest kids will still get things from it just like you do. Your younger kids, you know, the four-year-olds say, they can still get wrapped up in Narnia and benefit tremendously from the grammatically correct and sophisticated language patterns in the book, and of course, the beauty of the actual storytelling. There's something for everyone, from the youngest to the oldest. And what your four-year-old takes and benefits from when you read that book is different from what your 14-year-old takes and benefits from. And that's exactly as it should be. If we think of this as spreading a feast for our kids, we won't worry so much about every book giving the exact same things to each child, which is, I think, when we get hung up on the idea of reading with a wide age range. Everybody's going to take something a little different depending on where they are, what they're bringing to the story themselves, their abilities, their developmental level, what they're thinking about, what's happening in their hearts and their minds. And that's all part of the beauty of reading. 
And we want them to see reading as one of life's greatest delights. So we want to really protect that delight and enjoyment of reading. Then we can choose some books specifically that will do that, that will meet kids at all different ages differently, right? That will appeal to everyone, that everyone can follow the storyline and that will really guard that delight and love for reading. So I want to give you some examples of books that I think are great for big age ranges. They won't scare or lose the younger kids or they won't, you know, introduce topics that are inappropriate or not development or younger ones are not developmentally ready for, but they also won't lose our older kids. They'll still engage them and they'll give them something substantial to sink their teeth into, which is really important too. Big ideas, good stories that are, you know, meaty enough for our older kids to get something from as well. So let's do that. Let me give you about 15 books that I think do this really, really well. And then if you have books that you have successfully read to a wide range of ages in your own home, we'd love to hear about them in the comments. So all you need to do is go to readaloudrevival.com slash 113 and tell us in the comments what books you've enjoyed reading together. And we can basically collectively create this massive list of great read alouds for wide age ranges that read aloud families all over the world can use to choose books to read together. Okay, first up, I have a couple of family or animal stories that I want to share with you. You've heard me talk about the Vanderbeekers of 141st Street. There is now another brand new Vanderbeekers book out called The Vanderbeekers in the Hidden Garden. Both of them are superb. Both of them are very well written, delightful, perfectly appropriate for kids, young kids, and will delight and engage your teens as well. This is the book that I've read most recently with all of my kids are the Vanderbeekers books, because I think they're probably the first thing that pops to mind when I think of a book that can appeal to this huge, wide age range. So the Vanderbeekers of 141st Street and the Vanderbeekers in the Hidden Garden, they're both family stories of a biracial family living in New York that they have their five siblings, I think, in the family, and they have to band together to basically um, help their family overcome a few obstacles. It's They're really delightful and fun. You can find those in the show notes. And I should just tell you now, all of the books I'm about to mention to you are in the show notes. So if you start to feel overwhelmed by the number of titles I'm about to throw your way, <laughs> go to the show notes at readaloudrevival.com slash 113. You'll find them online so you can click to them easily, but you'll also find a printable list that you can print out and take with you to a bookstore or library, which our listeners tell us they absolutely love because it makes it so easy for them to hop out and find some good books. So that's all at readaloudrevival.com slash 113. If you like the Vanderbeekers. Similarly, I love to recommend the Penderwicks for a large age range. The Penderwicks are a family story. There's five of them in the series. And they start with the first book has the four girls, their dad going on a summer adventure at Arendelle, which is a vacation house they're renting in Massachusetts. And they meet a boy named Jeffrey. And the girls are about to have a wonderful summer, except that Jeffrey's mother, Mrs. Tifton, has some other plans. <laughs> so you're going to have to read that one to find out how delightful it is. But The Penderwicks by Jeannie Birdsall is another favorite for a wide range of ages. Another one that fits sort of in this category of family and animal stories, it's different because the protagonists and the characters are animals, but it's Poppy by Avi. Poppy is a mouse and he is has to basically outwit an evil owl named Mr. Ockax. Not too scary for little kids, but engaging enough for older ones. I think Poppy can be a fantastic book for a wide range of ages. I've got a couple historical recommendations for you. First of all, the Little House books by Laura Ingalls Wilder are an obvious choice. I prefer these on audio. I do not like to read them aloud. <laughs> They're long descriptive passages. I just can't do it. I love these books, though. And Cherry Jones does a brilliant job of reading them aloud. You can get them all on Audible. So we'll put the audiobooks and the links to the regular books in the show notes so you can find them easily. The Little House books on audio are a regular in our family. We are regularly cycling through them over and over again, and everybody loves them from the littlest ones to my husband, who's the oldest in our family. <laughs> Another series I would recommend for families who really like the Little House books but are looking for something similar but a new story is this series called the Fairchild Family Series. They are less well-known, but they are very, very delightful. The first one is called Happy Little Family. 
These are by Rebecca Caudill, and you can get the audiobooks for inexpensive. At least at the time I'm recording this, the audiobooks are only $5 each. So we will put links to those in the show notes. But you can also just read them aloud or, you know, either way, they're wonderful. But they're about a family living in Kentucky in the early 1900s, and they're pretty delightful. One of the historical books that has been all-time favorite read aloud in my own house is Sid Fleischman's By the Great Horn Spoon, which is a story about the California gold rush. Your youngest kids may get lost a little bit in the storyline, but they won't care because (laughs) there's enough funny parts and exciting scenes that I think they'll get pulled back in. And so it's okay. They won't mind. And I think it's a story that could lend itself really well to little kids and to teens. It's just a fantastically fun read aloud. On to Oregon by Honor Morrow. And this one might be out of print. I'm going to look right now while I'm on air even to see because I'm not totally sure if it's out of print or not. It might be. I'm thinking it probably is. This is tells this journey of the Sager children, which is the Sager children were real children. So it's based on the true events. This is a fictionalized account of the children having to travel the Oregon Trail without their parents from Missouri all the way to Oregon in the mid 1800s. And I love this book for a wide range of ages because like a lot of the books that I've recommended, there are characters when you have these big family stories like the Penderwicks, the Vanderbeekers, On to Oregon, Happy Little Family, you end up having a character at about everybody's age range in your family or at least a a different character that everybody in your family can latch onto and identify with. And I think that goes a long way toward appealing to a wide range of ages. It's just that if there's a wide range of children's ages in the book, that can appeal so broadly to to the kids who are listening, regardless of their age. So that's On to Oregon by Honor Morrow. I do think that one is probably out of print. See if your library has it. Keep your eyes peeled if you're at like a used book sale for it, because I love that story. I wish it wasn't out of print. Some family stories that I love, they're not really fantasy, but they've got like a touch of magic. I love books like these that just have like just a touch, just a touch of magic. One of them, of course, is Half Magic by Edward Eager. This is a whole series. In fact, Half Magic is just the first. So if your kids enjoy it, you are set because there are, I don't even know, nine, 10 books in that series. There's a ton of them. And this is about a band of siblings. There we are again with the siblings. And they find a coin that's magic and it grants your wishes, but only by half. So you can imagine, or maybe not, (laughs) the mayhem that ensues. So that's half magic. And that one's really fun for all ages. Another one with just a touch of magic is Emmy and the Incredible Shrinking Rat by Lynn Johnell. It's the story of a good girl talking rat and a very wicked nanny. So (laughs) we can imagine how much fun we're going to have with this one. I was surprised at how quickly I read this one. I didn't read it aloud to my kids. I read it on my own. But it was fast paced where I was thinking one more chapter, one more chapter, one more chapter. And it would be a really delightful one to read aloud with a wide age range. It's got just a little bit of scary, but not too scary for most young kids. And it's funny and delightful and great character development, which your older kids will appreciate whether they know it or not. The Bark of the Bog Owl is the first book in Jonathan Rogers series, The Wilder King Trilogy. I have raved about this series before. We did a whole episode on this series because I love it so much. I refuse to tell you anything about this series except that you need to read it (laughs) because I think it's better if you don't know what you're getting when you go in. So the first one is called The Bark of the Bog Owl, and you could absolutely read this with a wide range of ages. And I would be really surprised if you did not enjoy it every bit as much as every one of your children. Okay, and then I'm going to leave you with a couple of fantasy recommendations. One is by Jennifer Trafton. It's called The Rise and Fall of Mount Majestic. This is another one that I successfully read with all six of my kids. At the time, I think they were from three to 15, if I'm remembering right. That sounds about right. And they were more or less all interested, not so much the three-year-old twins, but my four-year-old daughter loved it. And then all my older kids, it's funny, it's witty, it's a little fantastical, not a little, it's very fantastical. And uh, we'll put the link to that in the show notes, of course. The Chronicles of Narnia, of course, you knew I was going to mention those, right? Because the Chronicles of Narnia are probably, you know, just about as perfect as you can get for a wide age range. Also, because you can read those over and over. So it's not like if your child has read them, and this is true for all good books, you know, but if your child's heard these books at five, it's not that they can't hear them again at eight or 10. So if you have older kids and you think, well, they've already listened to that, they've already heard that, great. 
read it again, and they'll get another layer. They will find new things to love. And that's true of any book that you reread. If it's a really good book, it doesn't matter if your child's heard it before. They can hear it again, and they get a whole nother level of goodness. In fact, I think there's a C.S. Lewis quote (laughs) about having... I'm going to look. Hang on. Actually, there is a C.S. Lewis quote about this, of course, because we don't quote C.S. Lewis enough on the Read Loud Revival podcast. (laughs) There's a quote that's attributed to him. It's, I can't imagine a man really enjoying a book and reading it only once. Yes. So if you are rereading a book because you know it's a good fit for your whole family, you know, let's say the Chronicles of Narnia, but some of your older kids have already read it before, that's great. That just adds another layer. It adds more depth and richness. So don't be afraid to do rereading so that your whole family can enjoy a book together. And then another one I wanted to mention is Where the Mountain Meets the Moon by Grace Lynn. This is a middle grade novel, so it's usually targeted at kids about 8 to 12, but I think kids from 4 to 16 will love it. It's Chinese folklore meets fantasy. It's beautifully done. Gorgeous full-color illustrations in it, even though it's a novel. And um, I think it's a great choice for a family. Read aloud with a wide range of ages. And then the last one I want to mention is The Green Ember by S.D. Smith, which I know tons of families who have read together all as a family. The only thing you want to be careful with this one is if you have sensitive younger kids, it might be a little on the intense side. But I've met so many families who have read it with their kids from, you know, four through teens that I'm just going to throw it on this list anyway. I think some of my kids might not have been ready for the intensity in The Green Ember before they were about seven. So just know that if you've got sensitive four or five sixes, you might want to wait on this one. But if your younger kids seem not to be too sensitive and can handle some intensity, this is a great choice for a whole family. So now that I've thrown 15 books at you, actually more because I threw you a few series, <laughs> cheated a little bit. I'm going to leave you with the show notes. Those are at readaloudrevival.com slash 113. And that way you can get the big book list. And remember when you're choosing books to read aloud as a whole family, focus on delight, focus on connection, focus on spreading that feast and trust that your older kids will get what they're fit for and your younger kids will get what they're fit for without worrying too much about finding just the right book for just the right level for each and every one of your kids. It's the beauty and joy of reading together, of sharing experience together, to going on a literary journey together that gives so much beauty and joy and life to your family. Now it's time for Let the Kids Speak. This is my favorite part of the podcast, where kids tell us about their favorite stories that have been read aloud to them. Hi, my name is Anthony, and I live in Sugarland, Texas. I'm eight years old. My favorite book is The Last Firehawk by Katrina Charming. I like it because the firehawk throws fire at the ceiling and traps the jaguars. Hi, my name is Emma Radigan, and I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I am 16 years old. And it's really hard to choose a favorite book that has been read aloud to me, even. But I would have to say that The Lord of the Rings trilogy and the Chronicles of Narnia series would be my favorite read aloud by my dad and by my mom would be the Pinderwick series. I like the Pinderwicks because it makes just normal everyday life so exciting and makes you be able to realize the things that are so funny in our day-to-day lives. And I like Lord of the Rings and the Chronicles of Narnia because they are so inspiring and give so much encouragement for our lives. I'd just like to say that I think we need more teenagers on here, so let's get to this, guys. Well, Emma, Sarah McKenzie here popping in to thank you for your message and to say, I quite agree. I love getting messages from teens. My name is James Radigan. I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I am 13 years old. My favorite books that have been read aloud to me would have to be the Hobbit series and the Little House series, both of which... I really like because of their adventure and because of the wonderful characters. Hi, my name is Joshua. I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm 11 years old, and my favorite book that has been read aloud to me by my dad is probably Lord of the Rings, and by my mom is probably the Gene Birdsall Penderwick series. My name is Anna Radigan. 
I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. I'm nine years old, and my favorite book is The Penderix by Jeannie Birdsall. And my favorite part is when Batty gives Jeffrey the picture of Hound. My name is Josiah Radigan. I'm six years old. I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico. And my favorite book is Rich and Scary. I like it because all the people are cats and dogs. Hi, my name is Charlotte Radigan, and I live in Albuquerque, New Mexico, and I am 14 years old. And my favorite books are the Ashtown Burial Series by Andy Wilson. I like them because of the adventure and suspense, and there's a little bit of romance, too. So, thank you so much. Bye. What is your name? Sloan. Sloan, how old are you? I'm two. You're two? And what's your favorite book? A night moon. The night moon. Hi, my name is Maya. I'm five years old, and my favorite book is Paddington Bear. I like the part when he's scrubbing himself, and when he's done scrubbing himself, then he gets all fluffy after his bath. My name is Josiah, and I'm five years old. My favorite book is Jimmy B. Jones, and my favorite part about it when she, she was funny is when she she doing May's homework. Well, thank you so much, kids. I love, love, love your messages. If your kids would like to leave a message for the podcast, go to readaloudrevival.com, scroll to the bottom of that page, and that's where you'll see the place where you can leave a message. We air those in the order they're received, and we air every single one. So I just love listening to those. I hope this episode today has been helpful to you. Most of all, I want to encourage you not to get discouraged if you feel like your read aloud life is not looking the way you hoped it would. If you had this ideal of your kids of all different ages sitting and enjoying a story together and that doesn't look like your reality, you are free to make things work the way they need to work for your own family. Separate those ages like I do if you need to, or maybe experiment with reading things that shoot more for the middle ages of your children and let your older kids listen to things that are under their reading level and your younger kids listen to things that are over their reading level. Try a few different things so that you can get all those benefits of sharing stories together with your kids, going on a literary journey together, and sharing the experience of stories with your family, which is such a beautiful gift to give your kids of any age and all throughout their childhood. I'll be back next week with another episode of the Read Aloud Revival podcast. Until then, go make meaningful and lasting connections with your kids through books. Thank you.